Hi everyone, welcome to the video on how to remove tarnish from your brass, copper, and silver jewelry that you either bought from us, own, or made yourself. I'll also go into how to protect your jewelry to prevent tarnish in the future. Hello, I'm Amy, and if you haven't seen our channel before, my husband and I are full-time artists who make a wide range of crafts with a variety of techniques. Our channel is filled with craft tutorials and how to get started selling your work. I hope you'll join us on our channel, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. So what is tarnish? Simplified, it's just a chemical reaction with your metal piece, the air, and sulfur. When this occurs, it produces a dark color on your metal. But tarnish isn't all bad. Metal or jewelry artists, including us, love adding tarnish or a patina to jewelry to bring out patterns, make the pieces look old or antiqued, and to create darker colored metal. Let's get started with our three favorite ways of removing tarnish. I recommend before cleaning your jewelry, first take a cotton makeup pad, cotton balls, or a soft clean makeup brush or paintbrush and remove any debris that may be on the piece. This is especially important around stones, enamel, or resin areas. If you got something oily or something against the stones or other materials, it may damage any porous areas, especially if you leave it on the piece for a long time. The first method you can use anywhere. We use it all the time at the booth. You can use it while traveling or even sitting down to watch your favorite TV show. This cloth is good for gold, silver, brass, copper, bronze, and a number of other surfaces. These polishing cloths are made with the jeweler's polishing compound right in the cloth. When the cloth is brand new, it starts off this nice yellow. But when you start to rub it against your silver or other metal pieces, the cloth starts to turn a darker, almost black color. This is the area of the cloth that is now used. It's not tarnish or dirt from your piece. These cloths are super soft and won't scratch your jewelry. And because you can control where the cloth goes and how hard you press, it won't harm your stones. Or bend any fine pieces of metal, like on this delicate filigree brooch right here. You can even buy small sunshine polishing buffs for your flex shaft or dremel or for other polishing machines. They are great for places that are hard to get into. If you're cleaning very old or delicate pieces, you can always cut off a little tiny corner, wrap it around a tapestry needle or toothpick to get into those difficult to get to places. To clean single wires or delicate pieces, just go over the item until you get the polish you want. What I like about this cloth is it will remove minimal patina that may have been added on purpose to bring out the detail to the piece. This is one of our handmade pieces I made for myself that hasn't been cleaned before. These sterling silver earrings I made for one of our fashion shows and photo shoots. I didn't store them correctly after using them, but you can see how easily this cloth is able to remove all the tarnish, but still leave the detail I added with patina. One thing you want to be careful with is don't use it excessively on silver or gold plated items as it can remove the plating. This is a vintage handmade bracelet I bought from a thrift store. It was very tarnished when I bought it, to the point of where I couldn't tell if a patina had been applied to bring out the definition of the piece and design. It's also very delicate as it's hollow and made with thin pieces of silver. But I was able to remove the tarnish by lightly pressing the cloth and the patina stayed in the details so we can still see the intricate images on the piece. Here is our second way of cleaning tarnish from jewelry. You need running water for this, so I don't recommend using it while traveling or at a craft show. This is the Haggerty Silver Foam that I use for gold, silver, and silver plate. I was going to show you the Goddard Silver Foam Polish, but I ran out of that a while ago and I wasn't able to order it quickly over Amazon. But this is a great alternative to that brand. What I like about this polish is there is no strong chemical smell. I have the extra mild polish here and you can take a damp soft cloth or one of these lint free towels and apply a little bit to the cloth. Now you can just rub over the metal as much as you can and then wash it thoroughly. It may be hard to use on thin chains so you can use a different method like the sunshine polishing cloth or the aluminum foil bath. I had to look up to confirm what kind of stones you can use it with. This cleaner can only be used with harder stones, not soft stones like turquoise or opal. Check out the hardness charts to see what stones are on the harder end of the spectrum to see if it's safe for your stones and do a spot test if you can, otherwise avoid it.
Here is a clip on earring I cleaned earlier. I'm going to show you how to clean small and intricate pieces. To get into small areas of the piece, use a Q-tip with the cleaner. And don't forget to rinse well. Here are the finished two earrings. This final way of cleaning jewelry can be done with items that are probably found in your kitchen. And here is our third way. You probably already heard of this and it works well mainly for just silver. But I also use it to remove fire scale from brass and copper minus the baking soda and aluminum. I won't go into this method too much as there are a lot of videos and information about it. Old rhinestones or anything with glue should not be put into water as water can get between the layers of the stone. Also, if you're trying to clean beaded pieces like this, the thread may disintegrate. All you need for this is a tinfoil lined glass or ceramic bowl, about a tablespoon of baking soda, about a tablespoon of salt, and about a half a cup of vinegar or more. Everything depends on how much silver you're trying to clean. You want to slowly add the vinegar to reduce the amount of reaction happening between the ingredients right away. Do you have any other ways that you keep your jewelry clean and tarnish free? Please let us know in the comments. Now add your boiling water. I fill it just to cover the pieces. You'll want to make sure your piece is touching the tinfoil at the bottom. Leave it for about 10 minutes or so and then check to see how much tarnish has been removed. You can do the whole process over and over again until all the tarnish is gone. You can already see the tarnish starting to go away pretty quickly. Alright, now the timer's done. You may still need to polish the pieces with a polishing cloth if you want to get a really high shine. Both pieces look pretty good. Now this is how I prevent tarnish from coming back. Also the tips on storing your copper or silver jewelry can be used to store any type of costume jewelry as well. That Lorimar piece I made has been sitting in that bag for seven to eight years and still remains untarnished. Often costume jewelry, even the nicer brands are plated with a thin layer of gold or silver, which can easily come off the piece if it's not correctly stored and taken care of. What I use for most of my pieces are these anti-tarnish bags. You can see they have a coating on the inside. There are other options available on Amazon and probably from your local craft store as well. You can also use regular plastic sealable bags of any size and use anti-tarnish paper like this here. You can put a piece of this paper or even the anti-tarnish fabric that is available from Amazon or other jewelry care stores into a bag. I know some of you may not want to use any extra plastic. So you can use cotton flannel like this here and make your own small bags and add an anti-tarnish strip and put it into a tightly sealed box. Or you can even find these small thick envelopes to store your jewelry. While organizing very old inventory and booth supplies, I found a pair of earrings that got separated from the rest of the inventory. This actually had an anti-tarnish strip placed in the box, but they still tarnished. So I did some additional research and I found the chemicals and velvet boxes actually caused silver to tarnish. So although these look great for presentation or to give your customers, a different box might be better to store the items in. I now use these cardboard boxes and make sure they tightly close. The best option is actually using a plastic case for your jewelry that you can open and close over and over again. But if you're like me, I try to use alternatives to plastic or find thrifted items. So I often check places like the thrift store for boxes like these. I know the presentation on those plastic boxes isn't very nice, but you could always decorate it. Let me know if you want me to do a video on that in the comments, or not. 
Of course, you'll want to avoid all perfumes, lotions, hairsprays, and makeup. And as possible, keep your pieces individually wrapped so no item is touching each other to prevent any extra wear or scuffs on your pieces. I remember we had one customer who never took her jewelry off, and she wore it during the entire process of getting ready for work every day, and that didn't noticeably damage it. So she wore it for an entire vacation where every day she was in the pool or at the beach. That did serious damage to the piece. So when in doubt, keep your favorite pieces out of water when you can and put your jewelry on as the final step of getting ready. This is especially important in high humidity areas, as the higher the water content, this will decrease the amount of time it takes for your piece to tarnish. In areas like this, you could easily use a silica packet that comes with your shoes or other items. Great products you can use to further prevent your jewelry from tarnishing, like this Renaissance wax or tarnish prevention dips. But make sure you do your research before exposing your pieces or yourself to any additional chemicals. Anyways, I hope that was helpful in keeping your jewelry protected and tarnish free. Please subscribe if you already haven't and I'll see you in the next video.